You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Higher Ideas Podcast. Last episode, I talked about yoga and flexibility, and how assuming unnatural postures can lead to greater flexibility over time, and could make you easily get into some strange contorted position and just as easily get out of it without injury. And I also talked about how this is similar for the mind. Um, You can get a mind flexible enough to be able to get into all sorts of very, uh, very odd positions and come back from it without much harm. And this could be very beneficial if you're someone who likes to come up with ideas or just likes to be mentally fit. Now, of course, every experience in life is an experience of stretching your mind. Every new thought that you have to ponder, every new experience you process, stretches you and makes your mind more flexible just automatically. But sometimes I think it would be really cool to have some sort of system that people can go through, just like physical yoga, where you can gradually practice holding strange mental positions or just simple exercises that make you more aware of certain parts of your mind or aware of different states of mind. I think I'm going to start just trying to make my own. I think I'm going to call it mind yoga. And I'm going to try and develop it right here on the podcast. And uh, I really want you guys to try and follow along and let me know how it goes. And guess what? This is going to be the first session. So with no further ado... Here's Mind Yoga 1. Okay guys, so for this one, I hope you're not driving a car. I hope you're not standing in line at the bank. Uh, For this one, you really will need to be sitting in a chair uh, and be able to remove your shoes, believe it or not. So pause the podcast if you're in an inconvenient place and come back here later and do this with me. But if you're ready to do this, let's do it. Let me have a seat here and do it with you. So, sit comfortably. Take a minute. Take a minute to relax. Now this is mind yoga, but for this first exercise we'll use your body a little bit. Okay. So if you're wearing any shoes, take them off. And if you're wearing any socks and you're able to take those off, it's great if you can take those off too. Now, what I want you to do is very simple. I want you to take your big toes and your little toes and spread them apart from each other as much as you can with your muscular control. Spread them nice and wide and then plant them into the ground so they stay spread out and really try and push it, try and get it to the maximum opening that you can get your your big and little toes to spread apart from each other. And now some of you might already be hating me because you might be getting foot cramps. I'm actually somewhat getting some myself. And the first time I practiced this, I actually did get some very painful foot cramp. And if that happens, just take a second, loosen up, and come back. So, spread your toes out, push them nice and well into the ground along with your heels, have your feet nice and flat on the ground with your toes nice and open. Now the thing is, the three toes between your big and little toe, try and get those evenly spread between the two. They might be clustered together. What's going on there? Well, try and also get those spread. And try to keep spreading your toes out evenly as wide as you can. Not so easy, is it? You might be finding that you don't have so much control on your feet. Now, if you ask me, this is actually a very comfortable exercise. It hurts at first, but you'll find that when you hold it, just like with yoga, if you hold it and sort of 
flex your muscles by pushing your toes down into the ground, it'll almost feel like a massage. And it'll almost feel like exercise for your, for your toe muscles under your feet. Or that is to say your tendons, because your muscles are actually in your calf. So you can hold this as I keep talking, or you can end this exercise now. But here's the point. You use your feet every day. You walk around constantly. But at the same time, look, your feet are paralyzed. They're somewhat crippled. When you try to use them the way they're meant to be used, you get pain, you get tightness, you have very little muscular control, and you find yourself surprised at just how disconnected you are from your feet, these things you use every day. And of course the reason is simple, it's because you've put your feet in a box at a very young age, shoes, and you've kept them in a box pretty much your whole life, and you haven't used them to the full extent of, of their mobility. See, a couple summers ago, I did parkour for a summer, and these parkour guys were very into the natural state of your body. And one of the things I remember discussing with them and, and looking at online is certain very, very hardcore parkour guys uh, in France basically lived their life without shoes on. They decided that they would put their feet back into a natural state, so they decided to live with no shoes, just toughen up their feet doing parkour, walking around the city, everything. And we were remarking how the feet of one of these men, photos of which we were looking at, were like hands, were like outstretched fingers. His toes had been spread so far apart and, and all looked like they, they, were, they were thumbs or fingers. They had so much definition and, and form and strength to them. Every toe was holding its weight. It was really incredible. The foot had opened up like a hand. And that is the natural state of a foot, really. And that was really striking when I saw that. I realized how bound and crippled my feet are. So what's the point? Why am I telling you about your feet? Well, as I said, you use these every single day. And so you would think that they would be in good shape, but they're not. Because they're only being used in a very limited way. And by now you should be seeing the point. It's the exact same way with your mind. You use your mind every day and you think your mind is in good shape, but for the average person, for most people, it's actually not as flexible as you think. It's actually been in a box your entire life. It's been limited and it's been underused. And that's what I'm aiming to change with mind yoga. See, this entire podcast is a soft exercise in mind yoga, but certain topics don't really make a great podcast discussion, and I think I'll turn those into mind yoga sessions. And that's it for today. That's today's mind yoga session. So from this point forward, I challenge you to keep the shoes off your brain. Get your brains out of those boxes. Flex them in all sorts of directions that you have not flexed them before. Find your mobility. Find your limits. And then hold. And then push deeper, slowly. Find new ways, new stretches, new experiences, new exercises for your mind and I'll bring you as many as I can when they come to me, and then we'll see what kind of system we can build. Also, it's a great thing to keep doing this little foot exercise, both for your feet and to remind you once in a while to do the same for your mind. So I encourage you to incorporate this into your routine, maybe once a week, once a day, whenever you're sitting at the office, take your shoes off under your desk and just stretch your toes out, and remember to relate that to your mind. Now, some of you may be thinking, what was the point of that? That didn't accomplish anything. Well, all right, Mr. Smarty Pants, let's go deeper with you. Look at your toes. Just, just look at them. Just look at them wiggle. Keep wiggling those toes any which way you want. Wiggle your big toe. Wiggle your big toe. And now I ask you this. Just what is it controlling that wiggling? Now, if you ask a scientist, they'd tell you 
that a chemical reaction that originated in your brain sent an electrical charge down your nervous system all the way down to your legs where it impacted with leg muscles and caused these very controlled movements of contractions and releases of energy. But if that's the whole story, then all you are is a chain of chemical reactions reacting uncontrollably to stimulus from the environment. In which case, I have done magic. I have pronounced wizardly words out of my mouth that have entered your brain and set off these chemical reactions this whole podcast that has had you wiggling your toes under my command. And is that what you are? Are you a scientist chemistry set? You know that's not you. So I ask you this, what are you? Who are you? Do you even know? Dig down inside yourself. Seek through the inner sanctums of your mind and get to your core. Your inner deep core and once you get there, turn your gaze upon yourself and see your true form. What are you? Now perfect, stop right here, hold this. What are you feeling right now? You're feeling fear? Are you feeling discomfort? Are you feeling that I may be crazy? Are you starting to get doubts about listening to this podcast further? Perfect. Hold. This is the stretch. This is exactly what you need. So stay right here and breathe while I talk you through this. So you're feeling discomfort. So you're feeling fear. Now ask yourself, are you okay? Are you hurt? Are you in danger? Doesn't look like it, right? You're fine. So then you must realize that this reaction that you have to turn away, to look away, to run away, is not justified in this case. So what is it you're feeling? What is that discomfort? Well, that's the stretch. Just like yoga. Just like in yoga, when you push your body to a new threshold, it wants to turn away. It says, no, this hurts. This is hard. Give up. But with your conscious mind, you have to tell your body, it's okay. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. You'll be fine. We're safe. This is a normal, safe stretch. Just release and relax and then you let go and the tension goes away and you feel great. Just in that same way you have hit the stretch for your mind. You've hit a stretching point that you never took it to before. I exposed you to a shocking new depth that you might not ever think about. So of course your mind wants to turn away and reacts with fear, with discomfort, with unease. But as I just explained there's nothing to be uneasy about. You should know by now from listening to me that I'm a logical person, I am kind-hearted, and that I have good intentions. And you also know from asking yourself now that this hasn't hurt you, you're fine, you were just kind of exposed to something weird. Knowledge is the antidote to fear. And just about now, with all this knowledge in hand, you should be feeling your discomfort and fear pretty much faded away. Well, congratulations, you've eased into a new stretch. That was just mind yoga. That was a deep mind yoga stretch. That was a deep inner thought that I stretched into in the way that I'm able to because I've been doing this forever. I went deep inside myself. I fished out a multi-layered deep inner thought and brought it back up from the depths and showed it to you like a heart beating and I put it away and I'm right here. I'm fine. Everything's fine. But things could get creepy when you delve deep inside. So best you get used to this now. Because, although I will not try to scare you like that, like I sort of did here, sorry, I will be getting into uncomfortable topics as we move forward. I will be getting into very hard-to-face questions that I don't have all the answers to. But to face them is fertilizer for the soul, for the mind, for the heart. It's, it's, It's exercise, just like yoga, just like lifting weights. I will be taking it a lot slower than what that was. But, that is where we're going. We're going somewhere really deep. So, hopefully you've recovered now, hopefully the bad feeling has faded and you might even be curious to listen to it again and see what the hell just hit you. Curiosity is a brother to knowledge, and so it cannot exist at the same time as fear. So if you're curious, you have defeated fear, and all sorts of adventures lay before you. But for now, that was Mind Yoga 1. We are just starting to get into the good stuff. And please catch up with me on Twitter, on YouTube, send me an email, let me know what you thought of this one. Hopefully I'm not going to get a bunch of hate. (laughs) See you next time.